What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is SEAL Team 6 smoked these pirates The Jessica Buchanan host hostage rescue. I, I almost butchered that. Um, I'm home on lunch again recording. Um, this video, we, we, we know about Jessica uh, Buchanan, we know about the mad story. We reacted to it a long time ago, didn't we? Yeah. It was kind of like a news thing. A couple of years ago we reacted to it. Um, this, I don't know what to expect, but we've been told a more in depth. I think you get a little bit of from a SEAL's point of view, I think, as well. We, it, we may not, but someone suggested this point. I know you've seen it, enjoyed your reaction to it last time. I mean, it's an incredible story, isn't it, as yeah. well? Um, and it just shows how the US, they will go and get one of their own. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so this is going to go in more detail. It's been a couple of years, so it's going to refresh as well. An amazing story. You ready to get into it? Yeah, yeah. SEAL Team 6 smoked these pirates. What have we got? The Navy SEALs clenched their fists as they heard Jessica Buchanan desperately pleading for her life. The American teacher had participated in a demining project in Somalia before being kidnapped by several pirates. It must be so scary. Now Definitely. she lay sick and starving somewhere in the desert, defenseless against the whims of her heavily armed captors. The operators of the famous SEAL Team 6 would do everything to save her. But one bad piece of news followed the next. Gale force winds would force the sailors to jump out of the aircraft at more than twice the wind speeds of what would have normally canceled wow. the jump. On top of that, they were in the middle of a solar storm, which could block radio communications to support units for hours. Oh, everything was against them. The then. SEALs would have to prove that they were among the best before they even touched the ground. Wow. Any other mission would have been delayed by at least a day. But the warriors knew Jessica didn't have those 24 hours. And so they donned their parachutes, checked their oxygen tanks, and then jumped into the unknown darkness and one of the most daring hostage rescues ever. Risky Jessica Buchanan was 32 years yeah, old definitely. and living with her husband in one of the safer areas of Somalia. Together with her Danish colleague, Paul Thisted, she worked for a large aid organization, educating children about the dangers of anti-personnel mines that were widespread throughout the country. Okay. On her next Doing assignment, good, she had to travel dangerously close to the so-called Green Line, an invisible line behind which lay the areas controlled by Islamists. The security situation in the Horn of Africa was already tense as it was, with bomb attacks and small skirmishes between rival tribes occurring almost regularly. However, Jessica had not come to Africa to hide behind walls, so she decided to conduct the anti-mine training anyway. At first, everything seemed to go without incident. But on October 25th, 2011, the day of their return trip, everything oh. was about to change for the two humanitarian workers. It's the day of their return trip as well. Again, if this is a bit of cost information, it was literally about two years ago we did yeah. this. So I, I can't remember. Like, I don't think we ever got told about the winds no, and how think. dangerous it was anyway just going in. But the fact that it was a day of their return yeah. trip, you've done all this, I mean, fair play, but going out, educating in a hostile environment, you must be quite scared normally anyway while doing that. Yeah. And then you think probably, all right, it's my day to go back. I've done good out happens. here. And then that's, oh, that's mm. so like just gut wrenching yeah. at the end. The first thing that struck Jessica as suspicious was her driver. Instead of their usual chauffeur, a completely unknown man was sitting in the land cruiser who was supposed to take them to the airport. Yeah, that's a bit weird. Mm. Her Danish colleague, however, seemed to be in a hurry and climbed into the passenger seat unimpressed, which is why Jessica stopped worrying. Then, after only 10 minutes of driving, it happened. A massive car forced the convoy to an abrupt halt. Nearly 30 men with AK-47 assault rifles jumped out of several vehicles, wow. banging on the Land Cruiser's windows and yelling orders in a language Jessica didn't understand. Before she could even realize what was happening to her, one of the pirates pointed his gun to her head while her security advisor was violently dragged from the vehicle. A heavily armed man sat down in the vacant seat and gave orders to Jessica's driver, who willingly hit the gas and showed who he was really working for. It wasn't long before they stopped again and switched vehicles amid loud shouting from the pirates. The whole thing seemed very well planned, although the kidnappers had obviously consumed too much cot, a plant common in Africa which acts similar to amphetamines. Okay. After the pirates stopped in the middle of nowhere, Jessica and Paul had to prepare their own execution, only to be sent back to the car just before their tragic end. What? The pirates didn't care at all about the lives of the relief workers, but in order to collect the highest possible ransom, they needed their hostages unharmed. 
For them, it was fun to mock the powerlessness of the West on the other side of the world. Jessica and Paul, meanwhile, were living their nightmare. They could do nothing as they were at the mercy of the barbarians and Literally. didn't even know if anyone had noticed their disappearance. But Washington was not only aware of the abduction of the humanitarian workers, it had already initiated first countermeasures. Jessica's aid organization had notified the American embassy in Nairobi immediately after the assault, which in turn informed the FBI. Okay. From here, Straight on it. calls were made to family goat. members to reassure them and dissuade them from acting rashly. Even before the end of the day, high-ranking officials briefed U.S. President Barack Obama, and while the pirates were preparing to contact authorities, Jessica Buchanan was already a top priority wow. at the White House. Wow. Within the day. Paul Fisted later recounted that the best thing that could have happened to him was to be kidnapped with an American. Both hostages wow. and pirates. That's a lot of it, yeah, because he was, he was Danish, wasn't mm -hmm. it, as well, and it's just like, yeah. Because he knows he's getting safe yeah. with America and they're going to come and sell out. Oh, so he doesn't know that in the moment? No. But looking back on it, it's like, yeah. Yeah, America does it good, doesn't and like, it? And if it weren't an American, what would have actually happened? Yeah. Would it, would uh, them not, not they would obviously try, but would have they been able to do it and stuff like that? Not as powerful, not as big. Not as powerful, not as skilled. The US is just going with this stuff in yeah. here, like fair play. The fact that within a day, the presidency, Definitely. that's high level. Pirates were soon to find out what that meant. Almost three months later, Jessica was still in captivity. Three months, that's Good a long news time. was that she was still alive. Bad news was that despite slow negotiations, no agreement could be made for a ransom, as the pirates had even refused $1.5 million, enough money that each of them would be set up for at least 30 years. Wow. Every Greedy. day, Jessica Greedy. fought hunger, heat, and the constant fear that the kidnappers would harm her. As if all of that wasn't bad enough, a urinary tract infection had spread through her body, and in the worst case scenario, it could be fatal. In a final video message to Western authorities, she joined Paul in begging for their lives and a quick payment of the ransom. Otherwise, she would either die from her infection or fall victim to the whims of pirates drugged with cot. That night, Jessica gazed up at the brightly lit starry sky and prayed. Unbeknownst to her, her prayers were answered when 10,000 miles away, 24 cell phones suddenly rang. The men picking up the phones had long beards and were covered with tattoos. Some of them had the stature of a bear, while others looked like hardened marathon runners. Absolute beasts. But they all had one thing in common, their aura of absolute calm, self-confidence, and professionalism. They were all part of the famous SEAL Team 6, who had just been alerted for a hostage rescue. Over the next few weeks, SEAL Team 6's Blue Squadron trained day and night to rescue Jessica, her pleading voice from the video message always in the back of their minds. The warriors had hunted gruesome men all over the world, but when it came to the lives of women and children, they were especially motivated. On January 25th, 2012, the time had finally come. President Obama himself had given the green light for the hostage rescue. 24 of the best warriors the U.S. had to offer would risk their lives to try to free both hostages unharmed. Their plan was to parachute over Somalia and then approach the pirate camp on foot so as not to alert the enemy with loud noises. At the U.S. operations base in Djibouti, around 500 miles from Jessica's location, everything military related which was useful in some way was gathered. At this point, the total operation cost was already well over a hundred million dollars. Wow. That was how much America was willing to spend to save just one citizen. Which is, again, it, it's, it's awesome. It is mad, but awesome, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Like, year the number, I guess, because we were saying after a day they were alerted, three months later than weeks. It's not a simple, it's not just a simple rock up somewhere. No. I suppose you've got to find them. Mm -hmm. You've then got to plan on how you're going. You've got to train for specific things. Yeah. I mean... The SEAL team are absolutely badasses as well, aren't they? But if they're willing to spend a hundred mil, it's like, yes, that is absolutely awesome. Because yeah. at the end of the day, what is money when you can save a life? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, but they could have easily said it's just one person, hundred mil. Exactly, because oh, it's one person, hundred mil, whatever. But no, that's it's just, wrong, wrong thinking. Mm -hmm. But no, we don't care how much it costs, we're going to go and save her. And also, I mean, how lucky she was as well, because although we've got this massive powerhouse, I guess, they're trying everything they can do. Three months is, is a long time. Mm. It could have been Especially easy. when you don't know 
She bet she's got no idea of time. She's got no idea of days. She Drugged up pirates. Yeah. All it takes is one accidental shot. So mm -hmm. she also there is luck involved. She as did, well. probably didn't know she was going to make it to the next day. They probably threatened to kill her. Yeah, it must have been awful for her. Bombs. Yeah, it must have been absolutely awful. With final preparations completed, the SEALs boarded their C-130 transport aircraft and took off for Mogadishu. Remarkably, the pilots themselves had only just arrived and had been on a nine-hour flight right before, but performed their job just like business as usual. Fair play. All eyes, including those of the president, who was monitoring the operation via live feed, were now on the hostage rescue. As it turned out later, the kidnappers wanted to change their position on exactly this night, but had eaten spoiled meat and therefore ended up staying put. Ooh, that is lucky as well. On the other side, however, a violent solar storm erupted, which hit the Earth's magnetic field so hard that radio waves, and thus radio communications with other support units, were disrupted. That's mad that it's on mm -hmm. that day. In a worst-case scenario, no quick reaction force, no situation reports, and no close air support. On top of that, wind speeds were more than double what would have canceled a regular mission. But the rescue of Jessica Buchanan was not a regular mission, and every one of the 24 men on board was willing to take that extra risk. Fair play. Fair risk of their lives. three yeah. hours in the air, the C-130 had reached their drop point. The SEALs rose from their seats, hooked up their oxygen tanks, and then dropped for more than 20,000 feet into the 40-knot wind. After only a few seconds of free fall, the operators had already reached 120 miles per hour, a speed which is normally achieved by competitive athletes in optimal conditions. Despite the absurd wind situation, the SEALs managed to land semi-cohesively, with a few runaways who were dragged across the savannah for hundreds of yards before separating from the parachute. Holding security for each other, the sailors put on their combat gear and wrapped up their chutes. From now on, they had to walk several miles through the more than 100 degree hot Somali night. After nearly an hour as well. of silent marching, the sailors reached their last cover before irreversibly committing to the assault. They were now only 500 meters from the pirate camp. Along the way, they had changed direction several times to always have the wind in their faces, eliminating any possibility of being spotted early. That's like little things like that in it, like just the sound. Because mm -hmm. if the wind's coming towards you, it's not going to travel as far. No. That's why we didn't gravy. Yeah. It. Right, so the little thing, which I'd never, I would never have in my life think of. No, but they fall. Just instantly, like, yeah, nah, wind's going that way, right? Let's just move this way. You know what I mean? Fair play. <laughs> Every little detail counted when it came to sneaking as close as possible to the enemy. A hostage rescue differs from normal combat mission in that the hostage's life is even more important than fighting the enemy. Oh, definitely. The SEALs would literally run through machine gun fire if it meant they could save Jessica. Wow. Their goal was to remain undetected for as long as possible, then speed was of the essence. As the 24 warriors began to move again, the longest hour of their lives was about to begin. They had long been within earshot of the pirates, and only night's darkness kept them from the attention of enemy guards. As if in slow motion, one foot was silently placed forward, the weight shifted, and only then followed the next foot. An experienced SEAL named Justin Sheffield led the group. At his hand signal, the operators spread out far to the left and right to bring as many rifles forward as possible without walking into others' field of fire. Okay, that makes sense. Snipers positioned themselves on the outer flanks and monitored their comrades' actions. As the sailors moved forward in perfect unison, they could watch through their thermal scopes as the enemy sentries slowly became anxious and woke the other pirates. The SEALs quickened their pace, still perfectly steady. They've got to be Shepard silent while doing laser this. at one of the Somali guards, and without having to say anything, his comrades did the same. The infrared beam was completely invisible to the pirates without night vision, but they sensed something moving in the darkness. With a loud clack, they racked their heavy PKM machine guns and got into position. The pirates pointed their weapons roughly in the direction from which they heard the sounds. Mm -hmm. The SEALs increased their pace once again, now less concerned with noise discipline than with closing the distance to the hostages before all hell broke loose. Wow, so they actually heard, heard them like, mm -hmm. obviously you can't see them, but... Oh, wait, I, which I imagine, though, 
They're, they're potentially high on drugs, which has been... They're probably uh, not expecting it either. So. Not expecting it, but I imagine they're so paranoid. Yeah, because they don't know what's going on. It's been three months. Every time I hear a noise, I'll be like, oh, oh what is that? Yeah. High on drugs, potentially, as well. So maybe it's just a normal thing. I like, hear a noise, like, oh, alert, like, yeah. uh, what's going on? Do you yeah. know what I mean? But like, oh. But even like the little things like the laser beam, they can all see it, but the pirates can't because oh, they've got night vision. It's yeah. like just for coordination. Yeah, it's definitely. mad. With a deafening noise, the pirates' machine gun kicked off and fired deadly 7.62 millimeter rounds at the operators, followed by several AK-47 assault rifles. Oh, I saw a shooting. Yeah. The snipers had been waiting for just this moment and almost immediately silenced the enemy machine guns before seeking new targets. With surgical precision, the Navy SEALs returned fire while simultaneously fighting their way forward to find Jessica. In a similar hostage rescue, French Special Forces failed to overwhelm the hostiles quickly enough, resulting in the execution of the hostage. Yeah, I mean, we've got an ad to do it, but that is something you got to think of. Like, if you're not quick enough, they have time. They know they're going to die anyway. If they've got so time the to point? execute, yeah. which is like, yeah. so you've got to be that spot on. Yeah. Oh, he's intense, isn't it? Like, it's crazy overwhelm the hostiles quickly enough, resulting in the execution of the hostage. Each of the SEALs was prepared to do anything to avoid just that. The hundreds of hours on the shooting range under simulated stress conditions paid off when they spotted two pirates with AKs standing right over Jessica, who was crouched on the ground. Sheffield and another SEAL broke away from the formation and both made sure these pirates never kidnapped anyone again with accurate shots. When Sheffield saw the American's bright face, he dove on top of her in the ongoing firefight, shielding her from the enemy crossfire wow. with his own body. That's mad, isn't More it? SEALs joined in, and within seconds, the teacher was protected by multiple layers of the world's best warriors. Although the operators themselves all had wives and children, they put the hostage's life above their own. That's such commitment. Meanwhile, another comrade had taken care of Paul Thisted, protecting him from enemy fire as well. After all nine pirates were neutralized and the gunfire stopped, Sheffield put Jessica on his shoulders and sprinted out of the pirate camp as far away from any danger as possible. The other SEALs formed a human shield around the two, ready to resume the fight at any moment. After running as far as his feet would carry him after this energy-sapping battle, Sheffield dropped Jessica off. Pararescue jumpers, the U.S. Air Force's specialized rescue force, tended to the American woman, who still couldn't believe she had just been rescued by her countrymen. As she anxiously asked, what if more come? More could come. Sheffield coldly replied, we are SEAL Team 6. We will kill anyone who tries to harm you now. She was visibly reassured by that convincing answer of the bearded warrior who had just rescued her from the worst situation of her life. After the SEALs blew up the Pirates' Arms Depot, they still had to march to the landing zone of the exfiltration helicopter. Whenever a suspicious noise was heard somewhere, or reports of enemies came in over the radio, it took only a few seconds for Jessica to find herself under a layer of Navy SEALs trying to protect her with their own bodies. Fortunately, like however, there was no more fighting, and the American, accompanied by the SEALs, ran independently to the Black Hawk that would fly her to freedom. Behind her lay three months of captivity among heavily armed pirates, during which she could never be sure that she would live to see the next day. The selfless efforts of the men of SEAL Team 6 had finally saved her. As she reflected on the last few months, one of the soldiers on board knelt beside Jessica looked her in the eye, handed her a beautifully folded American flag, and said, Welcome home, Jessica. For those oh, who made this awesome far, thanks for watching. Oh. I wonder if at first she knew they're American. Like, if, like you know when someone just jumps on you? Oh, Does she think she's being attacked again, probably? I don't know. I suppose it's been three months. You're probably not fully with it. Mm. Oh, yeah, that moment as well. You've no, she's probably by... hungry. She's probably just been starving. Yeah, she? she can't fight back either. So she's probably just accepted mm. whatever it is and just fed up. I, mm. I all getting goosebumps. Like, like, we knew the result. We knew the end result. We know we were going to make it out because we, we've heard it before. But, oh. Still crazy story to hear again. Straight crazy story. I mean, this channel is awesome. Great storytelling as well. I, I say storytelling. Yeah. It's a true story, but they, yeah. they told it amazingly. Uh, if you enjoyed it, go and check the channel out. The link is in the description. Um, yeah. We, we said all our comments throughout, didn't we? Mm. Well, and that's pretty much it. What should we do? Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.